Project Guru. 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 Всем привет! С вами Зак Новак на радиостанции Новоруссия Rocks. Welcome to Novorussia Rocks Radio Station. This is Zach Novak, your American in downtown Donetsk program project guru. Guru is here as always in the house. Guru, thank you so much for all the hard work that you do. Andre, my engineer as well. Let's go straight to the news. Crisis news, 24 hours. Full report for the past 24 hours of war crimes, atrocities committed by the Poroshenko junta regime. Again, the indiscriminate bombing and attacks on civilian areas. There are casualties and damages to the infrastructure and homes. Kiev junta forces shelled overnight two villages and the Volvo center area in the western and northern outskirts of Donetsk in the Donbass region, according to a source in the law enforcement agency of the Donetsk People's Republic. The Ukrainian junta forces began shelling the Zybichevo village at around 11.30 p.m. Then the junta Ukraine forces fired, targeted the outskirts of neighboring Volvo Center. At around the same time, Trudovskaya village was hit. The Nazi Ukrainian forces carried out the shelling from the positions of Pesky and Marinka, villages using mortar fire with calibers of 82 and 120s. Also, SPG tripod mounted man portable 73 millimeter recoilless gun as well as small arms fire. On Sunday, the Kiev forces shelled the Shirokaya Balka village in the southeastern suburb of Kolovka using mortars and tanks. Also in 43 ceasefire violations by Nazi Ukrainian troops have been reported in the past day. Ukrainian junta troops opened fire at the Republic's territory a total of 124 times in 43 different instances in the past day. A major ceasefire violation. According to the DPR Defense Ministry, Nazi Ukrainian troops shelled the area around the former Donetsk airport, including Volvo Center, the settlements of Zabichevo, Spartak, villages of Staromikhailovka and Trudovska in Donetsk western suburbs, as well as the settlements of Signal Nolye, south of Donetsk, the settlement of Zaitsevo in Gorlovka, northern suburb, and Gagarin mines in Gorlovka. Atrocities. Ukraine junta forces again using mortar fire 120s and 82s, armored vehicle grenade launchers, and firearms. The Nazi Ukrainian side continues to use banned weapons from its positions in the buffer zone. Casualties and damages have been reported in the settlements of Zakanka. So as we can see, major ceasefire violations, war crimes, genocide atrocities, the constant bombing of civilian areas, indiscriminate, indiscriminate civilian areas being targeted. But listen to this, Guru. Again, fighting amongst themselves. This situation has been getting intense the past two weeks as government forces of Ukraine in another heavy bloody skirmish with nationalist volunteer units such as the Nazi right sector, Nazi right sector, nationalist uh, formations fighting against the Ukrainian army. The battles have been raging amongst themselves due to different commands, war profiteering, and of course, for control. Eight members of the Ukrainian forces were hospitalized, including five with gunshot wounds as a result of the bloody conflict between members of the Ukraine army, 30th Mechanized Brigade, and the nationalistic element forces near the front lines of the conflict zone in Donbass region. According to our intelligence DPR, the armed forces of the Ukraine's 30th Mechanized Brigade, eight were wounded. Five of them entered the field hospital in the locality of Chaziv Yar with gunshot wounds. DPR intelligence noted that according to our source, the conflict was initiated by the Nazi elements of the nationalists who accused their colleagues, the government troops, of lack of being patriotic. Earlier, Defense Ministry Intelligence reported recently that the nationalistic militant groups increasingly arrive at the APU Ukrainian Army unit staging areas to identify individuals, calling them sympathizers of the DPR or insufficiently not patriotic enough. She is back. Our savior, the daughter of Gaddafi in Libya, will lead the resistance against NATO and terrorists. A declaration by Aisha that she is now the leader of the resistance and to form an underground government for the first time in four years since November 2011. Daughter Aisha Momar Gaddafi made an appeal to the Libyan people. It follows from two published letters after the captivity in Algeria and Oman. Aisha Gaddafi, for the first time, declared herself after the flight from Algeria and Oman to become a leader of the resistance at a crucial moment for the country on the eve of the new NATO intervention. As Lieutenant General of the Libyan Army, she reported on the loyalty to the cause of her legendary father and urged Libyans to wake up, to win, to be victorious, to return to the Jamaharia government. The daughter of Gaddafi in Libya will lead the resistance against NATO and terrorists. Aisha Gaddafi guarantees in the coming months to form an underground government with known Libyans, Gaddafi's faithful, who will act as a proxy in Libya and abroad. 
analyzing the current situation, she criticized former army rolling in crazy mixture of anarchists for their choice of war of the ones who pays. Gaddafi's daughter accused them of using the green flag of Jamaria for the recruitment of supporters and strengthening tribal government under the shadow of which they enter into an alliance with the Islamists. The tribes of the Tuareg and Tubo, she was accused of separatism and conspiracy with the government of Tobruk. Ashia Gaddafi called on the Libyan armed forces soldiers to bring her oath as the commander-in-chief to rebuild the country. My name imposes on me the duty and gives me the right to be headed and ask for my loyalty in battle, writes this brave woman who during the war lost her husband and two children. Today, she is ready to become a symbol of the nation and on par with the portrait of Gaddafi calls for his own portrait as a symbol of the mission for the rebirth of national unity. Speaking of Libyans as my children, she compared herself with the mother who will fight for their children. Talking about the terrorist Al-Qaeda who overthrew Gaddafi in 2011, Aisha Gaddafi prophetically noted that their ruin and demise, own breath of madness, and will split, cease to exist. Our strikes, nothing compared with those that they caused themselves. She noted that we are ready for this deadly combat in which the terrorists would face a nation, a one nation. However, Aisha Gaddafi makes it clear that the war will not end with our victory. In conclusion, she promised to write a new treatment. According to the rumors, the printed version of this appeal secretly distributed in both the capital of Libya, Tripoli, and Tobruk, and in the near future is expected to hear her speech on local television. Aisha, mother of the nation, will lead the resistance against NATO and terrorists. Aisha is back. Novak Djokovic beats Murray for the 6th Australian Open and 11th Grand Slam. Viva Serbia! Djokovic beats Murray for 6th Australian Open. Lifts his 11th Grand Slam championship. Serb reigns once more in Melbourne. World number one Novak Djokovic joined Roy Emerson as a six-time Australian Open champion on Sunday night as he defeated Andy Murray 6-1, 7-5, 7-6 in the finals at Melbourne Park. The 20-year-old Djokovic has a staggering 57-6 record in Melbourne, winning his first major title there in 2008 against Songa before returning as champion 2011, 2012, 2013, 2015. The Serb captured his 11th Grand Slam championship, moving into equal fifth place with Bjorn Borg and Rod Laver on the all-time list for most major titles. Djokovic won three of the four Grand Slam crowns in 2015, only denied the calendar slam by Stan Wawrinka in the Roland Garros final. Djokovic approved to 22-9 FedEx ATP head-to-head -head record against Murray as he wrapped up victory in 2 hours and 53 minutes. The Belgrade native won 6 of their 7 meetings last season since Murray defeated the Serb in 2012 US Open. Djokovic has won 14 of the past 16 contests. Djokovic, for the 6th time, wins the Australian Open. Egypt Air mechanic planted ISIS bomb on Russian jet. A mechanic working for Egypt Air suspected of planting a bomb aboard the Russian passenger jet that crashed shortly after takeoff in Sinai on October 2015, killing all 224 passengers and crew members on board. Unnamed sources quoted by Reuters said two airport policemen and a baggage handler were also detained and interrogated on suspicion of helping the mechanic put the bomb on board. The airline denied that any of its employees are suspects. Egypt has not cited terrorism as the cause of the crash of the Russian Metrojet plane. After learning that one of its members had a relative that worked at the airport, Islamic State delivered a bomb in the handbag to that person. One of the sources is quoted by Reuters as saying, adding that the suspect's cousin joined Islamic State in Syria a year and a half ago. He was told to not ask any questions and get the bomb on the plane. Another source said two policemen are suspected of playing a role by turning a blind eye to the operation at a security checkpoint, but there is possibility that they were just not doing their jobs properly. Meanwhile, a report in an Egyptian paper Friday quoted a government official saying the country has lost hundreds of millions of dollars since the Metrojet crash, which crippled the country's vital tourism industry. South Sinai Governor Khaled Faouda was quoted by the state-run Al-Haram daily as saying that the hotel occupancy in the resort cities of Sh Sharm el-Sheikh and Hurghada stands at less than 20% and that at the cities are losing nearly 2 billion Egyptian pounds, more than 250 million each month. Russia suspended all flights to Egypt and Britain halted flights to Sharm al-Sheikh after the October 31st 
crash incident. The Islamic State group claims that it planted a bomb on board and Moscow has concluded that the plane was downed by an explosive, but Egypt claims it is still investigating the cause. Guru, really some sick and horrible news coming out of the United Nations. Twelve more children in the Central African Republic have accused European soldiers and United Nations peacekeepers of sexual abuse. The United Nations said on Friday, with one senior official saying such abuse was rampant. Foreign troops were deployed in Central African Republic after mainly Muslim rebels seized power in the majority Christian country in 2013, provoking reprisals and fueling religious and intercommunal violence that has killed thousands. French troops have been in the country since December 2013. European Union troops were there from April 2014 to March 2015. United Nations peacekeeping, the Blue Helmets mission, uh, assumed authority from the African Union troops in September 2014. UN Assistant Secretary General for Field Support, Anthony Banbury, appeared emotional while announcing the new UN case. It's hard to imagine the outrage that people working for the United Nations and for their causes of peace and security feel when these kinds of allegations come to light, particularly involving minors, which is so hard to understand. The United Nations is doing everything we possibly can to assist the victims, to bring accountability and justice, and hopefully to prevent any such cases from reoccurring. Six children accused troops from France and Georgia and an unidentified European country of sexual abuse said to have occurred mostly in 2014 in or near a camp for displaced people next to the airport in Central African Republic's capital, Bangui. Those three countries and the, European, and the European Union are investigating the accusations, the United Nations said. Another six children accused of UN troops from Bangladesh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Niger, Morocco, and UN police from Senegal of sex abuse. The number of allegations made in 2015 against UN peacekeepers is now up to 22. Bangladesh and Morocco are investigating while the United Nations is investigating the cases involving Democratic Republic, Niger. After those states failed to respond, they failed to respond to the allegations. The United Nations is investigating the Senegal case in line with standard procedure involving police. What is abundantly clear in the, in the Central African Republic is that it has been rampant. UN human rights spokesman Rupert Colville told reporters in Geneva, all these peace, peacekeeping forces have played a very important role and we shouldn't ignore that. But we can't ignore the fact that hopefully a small number of these armies are committing appalling abuses. Convictions have been far, far too few. Last month, in independent review panel accused the United Nations and its agencies of grossly mishandling allegations of child abuse by international peacekeepers in Central African Republic in 2013 and 2014. Here's my co-host Natalia to bring you some more news from Novorussia. Sidrop of Novorossiya. Kyiv fighter shell populated front line area at night. Village Trudovsky, Zhabichevo, Volva Center, western and northern suburbs of the DPR were shelled last night. It was reported to done by the defense structure of the DPR. The shelling of the settlement Zhabichevo started at about half past 11 p.m. by Ukrainian fighters. Later they focused uh, shelling at the Volva Center area and finally they started shelling Trudovsky. It was reported to the agency. Ukrainian nationalistic fighters started shelling southwestern suburb of Gorlovka yesterday. It was reported to done by the representative of the Defense Ministry of the DPR. In regard to the words of the representative, the hostility used motors and tanks. There is no information about casualties and destroying. We reminded that key fighters shelled the village Zaitseva on Saturday as a result of shelling several houses inflamed. A useless talks in Verkhovna Rada. Vladislav Berdichevsky said, neither Poroshenko nor Yatsenyuk are independent fingers and unlikely that their replacement would reflect upon the Minsk process. I think that Ukraine will not fulfill agreements and the replacement of the government will change nothing. Until the main political players take the decision, nothing will change. In regard to the focus of Berdichevsky, all the stocks in the Verkhovna Rada will finish with nothing more as they all will get their biscuits and calm down. About 3,000 dwellers of the Lugansk People's Republic joined anti-fascist rally in Lugansk on Saturday. Anti-fascist march dedicated to the 73rd anniversary since the liberation by the Red Army the Lugansk region Voroshilovgrad in the past. 
from German fascist occupants was on Saturday in the LPR. Main goal of the march that was arranged by activists through social networks became protest of the LPR dwellers against neo-fascist Kyiv regime that unleashed civil war in Donbass. Activists passed streets of the city and stopped near the monument dedicated to dwellers of the Lugansk People's Republic killed by punitive nationalists and the moment of silence was announced there. All right, folks, what's happening in Caesarea, Kurdistan? No news for two days, two days from the people trapped in Caesarea basement. No news has been received for 44 hours from the basement in Caesarea, where dozens of people remain trapped for 10 days now. 10 days, Guru. Listen, folks, what's happening? The atrocities committed by the Turkish junta regime, Erdogan, that fascist, rolling in tanks, sniper fire at women and children, bombing targeting civilians, killing Kurds only because they are Kurds. And we have this one building totally demolished and people are trapped in a basement, right? So ambulances, emergency vehicles are trying to get in and they're being blocked by the Turkish junta. These people are dying. No news has been received for the past 44 hours from the basement of Caesar where dozens of people remain trapped. Also, Mothers, uh, parents arriving at the scene to see their loved ones have been taken away. Not only taken away, folks, but they have been apprehended, taken to the police station house. This is totally absurd, madness, genocide, atrocities by the Turkish junta fascist regime. Folks, everybody, I stress all the time, everyone be safe, be alert, have a great day. See you all on Wednesday. Viva PKK. Bye-bye, folks.